Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Angelo Rocha and I'm a PhD candidate in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. Today I'm here with a very special guest, Johnny Saldana, is a professor emeritus from Arizona State University's School of Film, Dance and Theater. He's the co-editor of the book Analyzing and Interpreting, Interpreting Qualitative Research at the interview that is in production right now with Sage and he's also the author of the chapter Dramatize Interviews. Johnny Saldana has been cited in reference in over 20,000 research studies conducted in over 130 countries in disciplines such as K-12 and higher education, medicine and healthcare, business and economics, government and social service, technology and social media, the fine arts, the social science, human development and communication. Thank you so much, Jonas, for coming here and talking to us today. Thank you. Could you share a little bit about the book and also about your chapter? I think one of the exciting things about this book is that it represents a, a collection of different ways of analyzing data that I have not seen yet in the field. It ranges all the way from systematic approaches such as coding, all the way to more holistic, open-ended interpretations of data to arts-based representations. So I think one of the great things and unique things about this book is that it includes a spectrum of different approaches to analyzing data. There are uh, collections of world-class authors in this book. And so I think that's what we're really quite proud of is the uh, representation of scholarship. My own chapter uh, contribution is dramatizing interviews. I have a background in theater and later on as I discovered qualitative inquiry, I got into ethno theater and ethno drama, the dramatization of field notes and interview transcripts into theatrical performance. And so with that uh, chapter, I present an overview, an introduction primer for people who want to know how to dramatize interview transcripts for the stage or for video. I think what I really like about that particular chapter is that I have the space to be able to give a concrete example so that I show a full interview transcript. Uh, it's a short one, but it's a full complete one. And I get to show how the dramatization occurred, how it went from you know, an extended length a uh, transcript into something more compact because theater needs to work with an economy of time uh, and most ethnodramas are monologic. Uh, I think that it provides a very good example for readers. So uh, my contributions to the book are also as editor. I believe that there were approximately eight chapters that I was responsible for supervising and for nurturing. And I was just pleased with all the people I worked with. Oh, so great. Um, can't wait to read the book. And what is the unique contribution that this book can has for qualitative research? We, the co-editors, had a very specific directive to the contributors that they all be very pragmatic so that they were very much how-to chapters. We wanted to make this a book that other researchers could use. And because there's so many different methods of analyzing and interpreting qualitative data, we wanted to make sure that we had a full spectrum of ideas. So that unlike other collections, which tend to focus perhaps maybe on just one methodology like grounded theory, instead what we did was we offer a whole panoply of different kinds of approaches. Uh, as I said, ranging from, for example, poetic adaptations of texts, to uh, how to use uh, auto-ethnographic work, how to be a very good reflexive qualitative researcher. So we tried to cover all the way from a data collection to publishing. So this book really covers the whole spectrum of qualitative inquiry. Oh, thank you. And what chapters stand out to you? I think what stands out to me most are the chap some of the chapters that I was responsible for in the arts-based section. 
the co-editors felt that I would be the best one to take a look at those. And so uh, Kakali Bhattacharya contributes a beautiful chapter on the way that visualization of data through collage and painting prevents, uh, uh, presents a very good way of taking a look at how we document the data and how we put our analytic insights into visual images. Sally uh, Galman is noted for her wonderful comic work, based comics-based work. And so what she did was she uh, contributed a chapter that is original drawings about how she approaches the analysis of the data through cartoon images. So uh, we are just especially proud of that. Another contribution uh, comes with poetic inquiry where uh, the authors, Monica Prendergast and uh, Robin, I'm, oh, I'm, I apologize, I forgot her last name, oh, uh, create and show the uh, readers how to take full transcripts and how to put them into poetic mosaics. So it's a beautiful way of showing how we use the arts as a way of knowing because this goes back to Elliot uh, Eisner's uh, theory that the arts are a way of knowing. The arts are epistemologies. And so through our use of the arts, we're able to find ways to represent analytic insights aside from just the regular prosaic text. So I'm quite proud of that particular section in the book. Oh, I met Asali and her work is just beautiful. Um, yes, it is. Yes, it's, it's very unique. Um, do you have advice for scholars who want to use arts-based research in their own work and they never used before or they are just in the beginning of this path? I always write, stop thinking like a social scientist and start thinking like an artist. What that means is art is not a journal article. And so don't feel that you have to put in the citations to the scholarly literature. Don't feel you have to have footnotes uh, explaining everything. Let the participants or yourself speak for yourselves. You don't need to bring in the academic literature to sort of justify your data, how you feel or how your participants are representing themselves. Let your participants speak for themselves through their own words. There's no need to bring in academic discourse into let's say ethnodrama because some of the most effective pieces that I've read have been adapted by people who have some background in theater. Now you don't have to be a theater artist to do ethnodrama and ethno theater, but I do recommend that what you do is collaborate with people uh, in those disciplines so that they can help you as the researcher learn about the art and together you can work uh, collaboratively on creating a research-based piece. Everybody is an artist. Uh, you know, from childhood, we're trained to create drawings, to sing, and um, our imaginative play, you know, we take on roles just by ourselves. We do that naturally as children. Um, we move with uh, speeds and different rhythms and we, you know, we play with music. The arts are natural to childhood. And if you're lucky enough to have those experiences in school so that you can continue developing your artistry, then you have been very lucky. Um, not everyone chooses to go into the arts, but for those who do, we have uh, ways that enable us to take a look at data conceptually, metaphorically, abstractly. And so we're able to apply those same skills into qualitative inquiry. And so it should work the other way around too. If you're a qualitative researcher and you know how to code, you know how to categorize, you know how to develop themes, you are very close to developing a work of art. Well, thank you so much for our advice. And this is gonna, I'm gonna take with me too. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Johnny. And uh, it's a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much, Michelle. Welcome.